WSJU Radio, DJ Mad Max on the airways up here at St. John's University from the Borough Queens. I'm a boss. What up, what up? We have a very, very special guest in the building here today. A legend from Pennsylvania. <laughs> Appreciate it. Jalo Beats. What's the deal? Holla at me. What's How you doing? On, baby? I'm good. I'm blessed. Welcome to St. John's University, man. Oh, man. Thanks for having me. Have you ever been here before? Never. Never? Never. My first time. Yeah? Yep, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, how long you went from New York for? Um, I'm actually leaving in a few hours, but I was uh, out here just working. I had stopped at the Rock Nation office um, yeah. yesterday and had a um, session, worked on some heat. Yeah, you know. got some more hits coming out. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> So tell me, what was it like growing up in Pennsylvania? You grew up in Chester. Yeah, I'm from Chester, PA. So you know, it's uh, you know, it was it was pretty rough out there. But mm -hmm. you know, I kind of like um, used music as a vessel to get out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, you know, it made me everything I am today. Mm -hmm. And what at what age did you start producing? Um, at ten years old. 10. So my pop is a um, music producer too. So he was in a band, right? Yeah, he was yeah. in a band. He had his own band, and um, he played the um electric guitar and uh you know he just you know um, in the 80s he got into um the drum machine yeah. um you know he had a commodore 64 uh -huh. so he was like hip on the tech early and um you know i was born into it you know what i mean i did my first demo i was like three my <laughs> first little rap he had a uh, home studio so mm -hmm. he used to always re um, record me and my six brothers and just you know yeah you know he was grooming me for a minute. And what, at what age was this? Um, what, like just yeah, when, working on raps and stuff with my brother? Yeah. Um, for years, you know what yeah. I mean? Leading up until um, I was about 10 and he introduced me to this program called uh, Fruity Loops at the time. Okay. And they changed the name to FL Studio. But uh, that changed my life. And then I, I just um, got addicted to it and uh, been making music ever since. Mm -hmm. Making hits. It's more like it. <laughs> <laughs> so... How about you get into meeting Meek Mill? How did that come about? Yeah, I met Meek on MySpace in like around 2008, 2008. Um, I had just came home from um, college and uh, I reached out to him on it, uh, on MySpace. And it was, I was just bigging him up and he heard some beats on my MySpace page and he was like, yo, send me some records. So I sent him three beats and one of them was this record called Hottest in the City. And uh, ended up being the name of his mixtape, Flamers 2, Hottest in the City. And then he ended up getting locked up um, a couple months later. And, um, you know, he would just call me from jail. Mm -hmm. And, he, you know, he was there for, I think, about eight, nine months. And he was just like, yo, when I get out, we just going to get in the studio. And we going to, you know, we going to grind. And I was, I was all for it. So when he got out, um, he was in the studio from like 12 to 12. Um, that was the only thing he could do. We just go, they, they let him go to the studio, yeah. so we just record like crazy. And you made a lot of tracks for Meek Mills, we all know. Yeah. Amen, Burn. Yeah, we got almost yeah. you know, a few hundred. Yeah, records. we got you got a lot, a lot of great ones. What are you, some of your personal favorites? Um, I think uh, I, I mean you know I think I'm a boss would be the the my favorite because of how it all um, unfolded. You know what I mean? We did that record before he signed with Ross, and um. He had Ross had did a verse for uh, a record that we had did called uh, Rose Rose Red. He did a um, eight bar verse for the remix, and um, you know when I was telling Meek to send I'm a boss to Ross, um, he was like, "Yeah, if he uh, if he um, you know jump on this joint, I'm gonna just sign with him." Cause I think Ross had reached out to him to um, like sign him, like maybe a couple months before, and uh, you know. He sent it to Ross. Ross just hopped on it like ASAP, and then he's like, "All right, I'm rocking with you. If you rocking with me like this," and this was when Ross was like on super fire. Um, I think he was like fresh off of like BMF and MTV oh, yeah. and all that, so he was on a crazy run. So you know, that's how all that kind of like came together. What's but, What's Meek like in the studio? I mean, with me and Meek, it's just like you know, I, so, you know, most of the time I just you know create stuff that he that he liked. You know what I mean? I know his style, I know his bounce, and we get in and we just work. And sometimes, you know, I might want to just, you know, break out my equipment and just make something on the spot. But, you know, Meek don't write, you know what I mean? So as soon as I just turn something on, he just right in. He in his zone. He's easy to work with. Mm -hmm. I think 
think it's, I think you feel the same way about me. You know what I mean? Yeah. We've been working together for a long time. Mm -hmm. well, maybe like ten years. Yeah. Right, longer than that. Yeah. As we all know, when we, we do hear some of your beats, most of them, we hear Jello beats holla at me. How did that come about? That tag. Um. So I got tired of um. Well, when I was on the local scene, I got tired of rappers not shouting me out. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make it um like a tag so people can recognize my tracks, you know what I mean? And um, one night I was in the studio with um, a good friend of mine and her daughter was, uh, you know, we was talking and I had her daughter on the mic and uh, it just came out, you know, she was rapping and then I, we just played it back and I heard it and I thought it was kind of like dope. Yeah. You know? So that's how it, it came about. Yeah. And yeah. stuck ever since. Yeah, and it, she's like my niece, so, you know. Oh yeah? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, that's how the ca uh, the tag came about, and I just started using it, and then like people started to love it. And it sounded like Jungle Beats. It's hilarious. Yeah. But the kids love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So just getting the kids' reaction from it is you know very important to me. Mm. What's your view on how music production has changed over the years, especially in hip hop? Um, I think it's a great thing. We, I mean, that's what it's all about. Ele I mean, you know, e you know, evolution. You know what I mean? You got to evolve and. You know, I love to kind of like, you know, adapt to the times and kind of mm -hmm. throw my twist in it. And, you know, nowadays with social media and just, you know, the internet, everything changes so quick. So, you know. Yeah. But I, I love, I mean, I think the production nowadays is a lot more advanced than it was. I mean, it's whatever your preference is. Yeah. For me, I think it's a lot more advanced with technology and just um, access to different sounds and sound libraries. So. Yeah. Sure. How do you feel about the drill sound that's going on in New York City? I think it's dope. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's, uh, I don't know how long it's going to last, but I think that it's a dope um, sound. I know it's um, it's inspired by uh, the UK because yeah. I was out in London last year, last February, and that sound was ringing off like crazy, for sure. Yeah. But um, I mean, you know, it's a wave right now. Yeah. It's definitely a wave. Everyone's getting on it. Yeah, I mean, that's how it Pop is. Pop Smoke made it big. Yeah, but you know, that's how it goes, you yeah. know what I mean? That's, you know, uh, when um, Just Blaze and Kanye West was doing <coughs> soul samples in um, early 2000s, that's when everybody, the sped up soul samples, when everybody jumped on that wave, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's how it go. Yeah, and I know over the years you've tend to move away from sampling. For those that don't know, why did you make that decision? Because I was tired of, um, you know, not getting enough publishing, you know what I mean? The sample, um, you know, they can charge, um, the artists that you sample from, they can charge whatever you, whatever they want, you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, when I did Amen for Meek and Drake, um, we got hit hard on the publishing side. Mm -hmm. And that song generated, you know, well over a million dollars. I mean, we got paid, but it could have been a lot more than what it was. And then after that, I was just like, no, nah, it's over. Yeah. I'm not really sampling like that anymore. Because you could have made more than you did. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You always want to, I mean, that's my advice to people. You know, you want to obtain at least 50% of the record. Yeah. I've talked to a lot of producers, especially around here at the station and in, in the music industry, and they feel as creativity has gone away. They feel as though people just take a sample and not chop it up and they just throw trap drums on it. I mean, I don't, I don't feel that way because it's always about how you, you um, kind of spin it mm -hmm. um, in your own way. I mean, if you look at dudes like DJ Premier or Pete Rock, Go these to. guys sampled, you know, James Brown's records and stuff like that yeah. and drum loops and loops and things like that. And, um, you know, it's, it's always been around. So, you know, it's, that's a part of the culture. Yeah. It's never going to go away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Who were some of your favorite producers growing up? Um, I would say uh, Pharrell, um, the, the Neptunes, um, Swiss Beats, Timbaland, Manny Fresh for sure, uh, Dr. Dre, Jermaine Dupri, um, Kanye, Just Blaze, they were like my favorite guy mm -hmm. coming up. Yeah, all legends that you just mentioned. And I want to get into, you producing for the game. Yeah. That was a crazy track, Standing on Ferraris. Yeah, featuring Diddy. Yeah. yeah. That was a hard joint. I like that. I sampled for that joint. That was um, Screaming Jay Hawkins. Yeah. I put a spell on you. Yeah. Uh, 
kicking kick, the door, kicking the door yeah. after life, pre mode to death, life kick, after death. Kicking the door, yeah. yeah. So you know, I just wanted to um, bring that real hip hop feel back, but just something like modern with the trap drums. I wouldn't even call it trap drums because, like, I mean, if you look at East Coast hip hop, um, a lot of these dudes started with the 808 machine and stuff like right. that, using 808 drums and stuff like that. So you know, all like elements of um, old hip hop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just in my way. Were you in the studio when this track was being made and the game was rapping over it? No, nah, I wasn't. I think I was. I might have been out of the country when they, when he did this record. Yeah. And uh, I think I was, and um, I think Wack One Hundred sent my manager the uh, record, and yeah. then I heard it. But I heard the record before Puff got on it, and then he got Puff on it, and I was I was going crazy on yeah. it. You know what I mean? Because um, Diddy is another. Uh, inspirational producer yeah. to me, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. probably, probably my favorite, for sure. Diddy's your favorite producer? Yeah, the way he put these hit records together, you know what I mean? He might not have been um, creating the music, but he was like, you know, like a Quincy Jones, you know what I mean? Yeah. For sure. He had more of a vision. Yeah, he's a visionary, yeah. you know what I mean? And I, I respect that. Mm -hmm. What are some of your P favorite P. Diddy tracks? Um, Benjamins, um, yeah. I mean, it's a bunch of Victory. Yeah. Uh, been around the world. Yeah. Oh, Mace. Yeah. You know, Mace was my favorite, first favorite rapper growing yeah. up yeah. when I was a kid. All the world. Yeah, it's a classic, for sure. People don't know that he was with Cameron and even mm -hmm. Big L with Children of the Corn right. back in the day. Mm -hmm. Murder but Mace. Classic, yeah, Murder Mace. For sure. We need some new Murder Mace. The last thing I released, I believe, what was it, the diss track towards Cameron? Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. Put some music out, Mace. We, we want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how about we take a quick break and we play Standing Out Ferraris, which you we were just talking about. Let's get it. Let's get into it, as you all know. The documentary, too. Keep it locked, 1147 AM. Got a little beats. Standing Out Ferraris featuring Diddy by the game produced by Jalo Little Beats, yeah, who's yeah. here in the booth with me. I'm here. On WSJU Radio, as you all know. So what was your reaction when the track was finalized? Um, it was crazy, you know what I mean? Um, and then, like I said, I, um, I had heard it before uh, Puff jumped on it. Yeah. And then I heard it when Puff was on there. So I was like real geek because, you know, Puff is uh, definitely a big inspiration of mine. And, um, you know, I was blessed enough to collaborate with him a few times. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know. It's just, he just uh, tapped into Biggie, yeah. like, even with his flow. So, you know, um, kicking the door. It was definitely one of my favorite tracks off of my favorite rap album. Life after death. Yeah, yeah that's sure. your favorite one. It's a flawless album, double yeah. album. Yeah. Nobody. I, I don't know. Yeah. I think that we, we might not live to see somebody um, or hear somebody make a double album yeah. as great as that. That, that brings me to my next question. Do you ever see anyone ever making a double album again? Um, I know Drake just did with Scorpion, yeah. um, and it was a good album, but you know, like, it's it's tough to get that flawless, you know, um, classic yeah. double album, like Life After Death, you know what I mean? Um, you know, I mean, Drake album, that was a great album. Even, like, Jay's uh, Blueprint 2 was a great album, but yeah. it's just, you know, like, you know, it's it's tough to, to, to have, you know, you know, all perfect songs on, on an album and yeah. then, you know, with the uh, right sequence, you feel me? Mm -hmm. And, you know, Puff and Big tapped in and, and, and created a masterpiece with that, for sure. Yeah, and we were talking before that a great inspiration for you and you also got to work with him many times at Swiss Beats. Yeah, Swiss. Oh, yeah, that's, that's definitely my biggest uh, um, inspiration as far as my style mm -hmm. of music and, you know, my style of beat making. Uh, I came up off of um, the Rough Riders, uh, Rockefeller era. Um, my older brothers used to listen to um, Swiss a lot and listen to X. X and Hole was their favorite artist, so I grew up listening to them. Yeah. And the Locks, too, you know what I mean? So, um, honestly, Swiss was the first uh, producer I ever, I've ever paid attention to, you know what I mean? I never really paid attention to, to um, producers. Until my brothers was just read, you know, they would read the credits and like, yo, Swiss Beats is a monster, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and it inspired me to want to make music, yeah. you know what I mean? 
So get into your experience working with him because you did have the privilege. Yeah, of working I got with him to work with him on a um, I'm a Boss remix. Uh, a yeah. couple other joints. One of the joints that I really um, um, appreciated was uh, a joint I did with Nori. It was a band from TV too, or it was called uh, Faces, Faces Death. and Death. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Switch jumped on that joint uh, with Raekwon and Busta Rhymes and. You know, me just being a hip hop head, it was just I was just geeked out, man. Yeah. It was crazy. You know what I mean? Just hearing my favorite producer on that record was crazy. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and then I, I got to meet Swiss a few times, and uh, I met him maybe like the last time I, uh, I talked to him was uh, I think two years ago at the Rock Nation brunch, mm -hmm. and uh, you know he was just showing mad love. You yeah. know what I mean? We flicked it up, and it was all love. Yeah. So as you just mentioned, the Rock Nation brunch. How did it feel to get signed to Rock Nation? Oh, uh, it was surreal, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I thought it was a joke at first. Uh, um, an intern from Rock Nation was reaching out to me on uh, Twitter, and I didn't think it was real. I know I was in a bidding world with about probably like close to 10 labels at the time when I'm a boss was ringing off. So everybody was hollering at me, but I never was. I, I never thought that, you know, Jay and I would try to reach out. You know what I mean? And, um... It was this kid named Malik, and he, he was like, just, he was really adamant about getting me up to the uh, office. He was just like on my top. So one day I just gave in and I um, responded to his, um, he was like tweeting me, and then I followed him, and then he DM'd me, and then I responded to it, and he gave me the uh, address of the office. <clears throat> and me and my partner, dude, we went up there. And um, funny story, I went up there, and um, they had an A&R there. I'm not going to say his name, but... Um, he didn't understand what was going on, so they put me in there with the wrong A and R. Oh. And he was just like, uh, "Yeah, just play me some beats." So I'm <laughs> like, "Okay, I'm here to play beats, or am I here for a meeting?" Yeah. So I came there and I played some beats, and he's like off to the side talking to his mans and stuff, not paying me no mind. And I'm like, on the way back, I'm telling my uh, my partner like, "Yo, I'm never coming back out here ever again. It's a rat." You know what I mean? <laughs> So the next day, he was like uh, calling me and just like blowing me up, like, "Yo, we had the wrong NR there. Um, you were supposed to meet with Tata, set it up, uh, blase, blase." And I ignored him, but I guess he gave my number to uh, Jay's close homie, Emery. Mm -hmm. And uh, Emery um, was just—he had hit me up and was like, "Yo, I'm chilling with Jay right now, and um, you know, we want you on the team." And uh, you know, I'm a boss, this is his favorite record right now. And, uh, you know, come up to the office, blase, blase. So that got me back to the office. I came and uh, met with uh, Tata. And, um, you know, he was like, yo, we, you got to run with us. You know what I'm saying? And the funny thing about that is I, I had two meetings that day. And I went to Sony, but their, their offices at the time was right across from each other, oh. across the hall. So he got with, like, before I got back, before I drove home, he got whiff of uh, me taking the Sony meeting right before that. So he yeah. was like, yo, you need to fire your manager. That's even hot. <laughs> Tata was hot. He was like, yo, if you run with us, I'll make sure you get 10 times what you'll get over there. And, uh, you know, I ultimately went with them and, you know, they held up their end of the bargain. Yeah. And, you know, the rest is history. Yeah. But um, the signing day, I got to meet Jay for the first time. And, um, you know, uh, he was just, you know, he was excited, you know what I mean? And he was just like, yo, don't let this be your last toast, man. Let's let's get it, you yeah. know what I mean? And the rest is history, mm -hmm. for sure. For sure, as you just said. Now, how about we get into you producing for Lil Wayne's new album, yeah. Funeral. Yeah, shout out to Mac Main. So, um, you know, I always I had a relationship with Young Money for like, probably like close to 10 years. Um, People used to think I was with Young Money because I did so many records with them. Um, you know, I started off working with, uh, I did Willy Wonka for Wayne yeah. and Gutter for the uh, I Am Not A Human Being um, album. And then um, I did uh, Mad Records for, I did J Mills and Chris Brown on Green Goblin, uh -huh. um, G-ish G uh, for Tiger and Chris Brown. Yeah. I was just working like heavy with, with Young Money, so I always had that relationship with Mac and them. And, uh, you know, I just jumped back in with Mac and just was working on some records. And I would go out to Miami um, the past couple months, and, um, you know, he was just like, yo, I need something for tune. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I got in, and we did that record, and, you know, 
we did a couple records. Actually, I, I'm trying to snatch one for my album. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so we did a couple, but I think it's going to probably be on a Young Money album that they're doing. They, they're doing another uh, Young Money compilation. Oh, so, yeah? Yeah. So, you know, definitely got some more records with uh, Lil Wayne, though. Yeah, that's going to be fire. For sure. Now, how about we take a quick break and we play the track that you produced for Lil Wayne. No doubt. Let's Off a funeral, let's get it. Clap for him. Yes, you already know what it is when you hear it. Mad Max, WSAU Radio. Got Lil Beach. Yes, sir. Mad Max back on WSAU Radio with the one and only Jello Beats. Yeah, yeah. Rock Nation Zone. Yes, sir. Pennsylvania Zone. Chester. Yes. We here. Platform. Little Wayne, you just heard it when she produced off his newest album. Yeah, just touched on Billboard charts, you know what I mean? What's what's he like <laughs> in the studio? Wayne? Yeah. He's chill, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's chill, man. He's in the zone. Yeah. I mean, put something in the air, you know. Yeah. He's crazy. <laughs> He's the GOAT to me. Yeah? Yeah, it's my favorite rapper, for sure. Favorite rapper. What's your favorite Lil Wayne album? Uh, The Carters, too. The Carters, okay. Yeah, I'll, me, and my, me and my peoples was just talking about Me and my friend was just talking about that. Like, which one is better, The Carter 1, Carter 2, or The Carter 3? Mm -hmm. I think that The Carter um 2 is like when he, like, you know, like really found himself. Like, I think he found his sound. Um, Carter won, but I think that he just, you know, all right, I'm Lil Wayne, you know what I mean? Oh, Carter yeah. two, and then Carter three. That's when he became a superstar. Yeah. You know what I mean? You had all the classics I think, on there too. I think, I mean, Wayne. To to me, I think, I think he's the greatest because of just, you know, making that transition from being a kid rapper that didn't cuss, yeah. to being, you know, a respected lyricist, to being one of the greatest to being one of the greatest CEOs and having one of the best runs I mean I just think that he's like great and I mean anything like if you look for you know a strength in any artist or rapper I think he has everything you know what I mean yeah. I mean you look at Biggie Smalls I mean he had everything you know what I'm saying delivery the voice um, the flow the charisma all right. that the flow I think Wayne got the same thing, you know what I mean? And then the influence, I always tell people, like, he's like Allen Iverson with rings, you know what I mean? Man. You know, he uh, changed the whole generation, so he has all these things. Yeah. And then to be an icon and still be able to go number one and still be a young dude, too, you know what I mean? Yeah. Dude ain't even 40 yet. So no. It's incredible. You know, so. Yeah. He's insane. He he's only he's one of a kind, and I've seen. Goal. Oh yeah, he's a genius. <laughs> he <laughs> is, and I've seen videos of just him in the studio. He doesn't even write anything down. He just goes nope. off the beat. Nope. And it's I mean, like I said, I seen I seen a few rappers do that. I mean, uh, artists. I seen Chris Brown get in the studio when we working on when we were working on Fan of a Fan. This dude did not write nothing. That was in, that was crazy. And then I seen Meek do the same thing, not write anything. Mm -hmm. And you know. I mean, I can't even memorize, I can't memorize nothing, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, it's a special gift you gotta have to be able to memorize your lyrics and just go in the yeah. booth and just put it down like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. and I'm a huge critic on lyrics, so I definitely respect the guys who do it, especially in this day sure. and age, because we went through a bad period, I'd say, what, 2015, 2016, where that whole, people were calling it mumble rap was out. Yeah, but you know what, though? I, I respect it. I think that, like I said, in order for hip-hop to grow, we got to evolve in certain ways, you know what I mean? I, I also look at hip-hop like it's so big, it has sub-genres within it, you know what yeah. I mean? Whether you want to call it mumble rap or whatever, traditional hip-hop. Yeah. Um, I try not to be a hip-hop elitist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I like to enjoy music for what it is because we don't want to put ourselves in a box doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't. I mean, hip hop is a culture. You know what I mean? And whatever you know e evolves from it, or you know whatever comes from it, it's, that's what it is. You know what I mean? So I respect that. I just was listening to Lil Baby new album. Yeah. I thought it was crazy. You know what I mean? I love uh, Young Thug's new album. Mm -hmm. um, I just listened to all. You know, all hip hop. You know yeah. what I mean? It all makes sense to me. Yeah. I think for lyrics, especially that you're in New York City, I take that 
very seriously who represents the city. People say a, a bo boogie does, mm -hmm. but I look at artists who has the real New York sound, and I look at Dave East. Um, I Dave bet. East, you know, that's my guy. Yeah. I, 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 you know, All I know, he pr yeah. 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 I, so I kind of like, you know, um, was in the beginning, you know what I mean? Even till maybe like last year we did On God, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. Um, me and Wayne, you know, was winning. I was just trying to give him the right records, like uh, Forbes list and stuff like that. Um, yeah. With Nas? With, no, not. I mean, not Forbes list. What's the uh, Tom Ticking? Yeah, that's with, right. With uh, Rowdy and um, and uh, Bobby and um, Jewels. You know what I mean? I just wanted to give him that, you know, that bounce. You know what I mean? But I, I, I like a boogie, and I like. Um, but I mean, for real, for real. If you if you really want to look at it, like I, I I think right now Pop Smoke was the one he had the sound in New York mm -hmm. at the time. You know what I'm saying? Now if you're talking about traditional hip hop, yeah. I think uh, uh, Dave East definitely he yeah. holding the flag for sure. Yeah. Like you know he come from the same. I mean I think be the same age. He come from the same era that I come yeah. from. So we listen to things a lot different, and we our um, idols growing up was. Dudes like Kiss and like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Meth and Nas and yeah. Hove, you know what I mean? Seagull, stuff like that. But I mean, I, I think that uh, Pop Smoke had the sound, and I think before that, Bobby Schmurter. Bobby Schmurter. The sound that we created, you know what I mean, was the sound. You know what I mean? It's, I mean, it still is. I mean, it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot of different bounces, you know what I mean? But right now, I think the hottest sound is. Um, Pop Smoke, yeah. what Pop Smoke is doing. Yeah, everyone's jumping you know I mean? on the drill sound. For yeah. sure. Yeah. But as I mean, New York sound, I think like, you know, Bobby Smurder, Young and May, um, what we was able to do with like Ooh and like um, Hot Hot Nigga, mm -hmm. Hot Boy, uh, I think that that was like a different sound, and it was like it wasn't coming from no other region. You yeah. know what I mean? But you know, Philly and New York or whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think that's the new sound. For sure. Yeah. And I love what Bobby Schmurda did, especially for Hot Boy. How did you two link up? Yeah, well, um, he was a big fan. Him and Rowdy was a big fan of me and Meek, so he would go on, like, that piff and, like, download, like, all my um, instrumental uh, mixtapes and stuff like that. And um, they did Smoney Dance, and then they did Hot Boy. And uh, it got, it went viral on the um, Vine and, the, and the, the Internet. Yeah. And then... Um, I never forget. I think Kevin Durant tweeted me like, "Yo, this joint crazy," and I was like last to find out. So I reached out to him on um, Instagram, and I was like, "Yo, um, you know, uh, I want to help you, you know, get that, that make that song legit." You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, right after that, Shot Money XL. I was trying to sign him, but Shot Money jumped the gun. I, I think Shot Money was hollering at him, like, oh. like he had got at him like ASAP, and then um. Right after that, they pay. He paid for the record, both of the records, mm -hmm. and then um, the rest is history. Yeah, people you know love I mean? that track. It's a hit. It's a classic. Yeah, for sure. It is. Um, it was crazy because somebody sent me an article from Billboard, and it was uh one of the biggest songs or one of the best songs of the, the past decade. Yeah, so that was like I, that was trending on Twitter this morning too. That, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's a song that's going to stay around for a long time. I think know? so. It's a New York record. It's a classic record for yeah. sure. I remember when that dropped, just everyone, especially when I was in high school, was going crazy. You know what's so crazy about that? It, um, it, it went in the top 10, then it went uh, number one, but it went in the top 10, hot 200, and it didn't even have a hook. It was just like a freestyle, you Man. know what I'm saying? And that was crazy because, like, you know, it's a street record. It's a street record, you know Man. what I mean? It ended up going, like, pop. So that was, like, real important for me because, like, you know, I'm a producer of integrity, you know what I mean? So... I represent the streets. Like if you listen to like most of my hit records, they are street driven records. You yeah. know what I mean? We just making music the way we want to. You yeah. know what I mean? So And that's the goal. For sure. That's what defines your sound. What you say? That's what you that's what defines oh, yeah, your sure, sound. For sure. I mean I am a uh, reflection of my environment yeah. or coming up, you know what I mean? So yeah. for sure. Yeah. Or like the nineties would say product of the environment. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. I know third base use that a lot in their songs. Yeah, it works. <laughs> Definitely. So how about we get into that Bobby Schmurter track? Let's get it. Hot boy. Get into it here. Twelve ten PM. WSJE Radio Mad Max on the airways. Jello Beats. The classic. WSJE Radio Mad Max. Twelve thirteen PM with Jello Beats. Yeah, yeah. I'm you here. just heard it, Hot Boy, Bobby Schmurter. Yes, sir.
the classic, as you said. Classic. And everyone would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> so when Bobby gets out, it's we can be looking forward to hearing your sound oh, and him sure. collab once again. Me, him, and Rowdy. As soon as he gets out, it's on and popping. For sure. Yeah, let's put let's, let's bring some great sound into New York again. For sure, something different too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Something unexpected, oh, unexpected that people aren't ready for. Wall, you know what I mean? I think, I mean, I feel like when that dropped, that was like a first of its kind, like that type of record that bounced. Oh, yeah. I mean, with the choir and all, you know, it just was different. You know what I mean? I want to bring something different to the table again. Yeah. For sure. Of Definitely. course. Of course. And tell me, what's your view on the hip hop scene in Pennsylvania and Philadelphia right now? Um, it's great, man. It's great. You got a lot of um, dope new talent. Uh, this girl named Rocky that's bubbling out there. Uh, this kid named Sim Santana. Okay. He's bubbling too. Um, it's a lot of dudes. Zasosa. Um, who else? Uh, I mean, you got your usual uh, suspects. You got uh, P and B Rock. You got Uzi. Right. You got Meek. You know what I mean? Um, it's a kid named Quilly yeah. that can spit. He's dope, um, but Philly got a dope scene right now. Yeah. A lot of spitters, a lot of um, different type of music, you know what I mean? And I'm um, just blessed to work with all these guys. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Who are some artists that you haven't worked with that you would love to work with? Out of Philly or just period? Period. Uh, mm -hmm. Kanye West. Kanye. Yeah. Kanye for sure, definitely. I know it's going. I know we gonna cross paths soon. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you know Kanye for sure. Yeah. Any others? Uh, I know you worked with pretty much some of the greats yeah. in the industry. Um, so it's very little. I want to work with NBA Young Boy. He, mm -hmm. He's another young boy yeah. that I want to do some stuff with. He's killing it. Mm -hmm. um, we never cross paths, but as soon as we do, definitely gonna get yeah. in, get some stuff down. But that's about it. I didn't. I mean, I didn't pretty much work with um, everybody that I wanted to work with. Uh, you know, right now I'm just, you know, just doing me on my own time. And, uh, you know, I want to develop artists and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that'll be my next uh, move. Development. I like to take dudes and just, like, you know, you never heard them and, and try to break them, you know what I mean? That's how I came into the game, you know what I mean? Yeah. Developing sounds with different artists, you know what I mean? Um, even, like, my boy Anderson Pop, you know what I mean? Um, you know, Bubbling gave him some legs, you know what I mean? So... Yeah, definitely. It's a great track as well. Yeah, it's one of my favorite tracks yeah. personally. Yeah, I like I like what he's doing. He's a genius, yeah. man, for sure. Yeah. I just did some new stuff with him too um, a couple months back. Uh, we were at uh, Made in America in Philly, and uh, we ended up coming out here, coming out to New York, and um, working on some music. Yeah. We're looking forward to hearing some more of that. Yeah, for sure. He's on my project too. I got an album coming soon. Uh. Got him on there, I got uh, Meek on there, Gucci Mane, got a whole bunch of people on there. Mm -hmm. If there was a 90s artist that you would want to put on your beats, who would it be? Biggie Smalls, all day. Biggie Smalls? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. For sure. Yeah. B.I.G. Mm -hmm. Could you hear him on any of the beats that you put out? Yes, every one of them. Every one of them. he can rap on anything. Yeah. Like, he can adapt any style and do it in his way. So I know we would have made some. I know for sure if he was alive, we would have definitely worked. Definitely. Yeah, I think for sure. so. For sure. Yeah, for sure. That's right. So I know you've released a lots of beat tapes over yeah. the years, and it's just crazy. You just go on down the list of mm -hmm. all the tapes that you've released. Do you have a personal favorite? Um, I just dropped one. It's like 300 songs. <sighs> Yeah, isn't that yeah, like the unmastered my, one? Yeah, it's yeah. called, uh, no, 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 that's a hundred. That's a hundred. Yeah, so I, l I always look at it like this, like, I'm going to die one day, you know what I'm saying? It, I'm just humble and blessed to be here today, you know what I mean? Yeah. We don't know what tomorrow holds, so why hold on to the music, you know what I mean? I look at my projects like every single song is a song, and it, and it, and it matters, you know what I'm saying? You look at uh, Hot Boy, how that came about, that was off an of instrumental tape, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So... I, I, I kind of like use these instrumental tapes as personal albums and things like that and you know like a collection you feel me so when I'm dead and gone and, and these kids um, that you know came up off of this and taught it to their kids and 
their kids, you know what I mean, hopefully I, I still be around or hopefully they can listen to that stuff and um, you know. I got a whole bunch of it out there. So yeah. that that was my whole thing, you know what I mean? Just putting music out and not sitting on anything. Yeah. For sure. And I also wanted to get into the jacket you're wearing today. Yes, this is my surprised. boy E. Graham right here. He made this uh maybe like two years ago and the back is crazy. You yeah. Know what I mean. Um, but uh, you know, I listen to a lot of stuff. We got Kiss on here, got A C D C. You know what I mean? Um, I just, you know, you know, being a producer, you, you, you listen to a, a whole bunch of stuff. You know, you sample a whole bunch of stuff. You know what I mean? So, you know, I listen to uh, a lot of stuff. You know, right now, have you ever heard of Tame Impala? You yeah, check them yeah. Out. They like he just favorite. dropped something. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, something. it's crazy because, like, um, I thought it was a band, right? Oh, yeah. And then I seen the video, and it's one guy. Oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Something. Yeah. Oh, I got that. Uh, I definitely listen to that. Album. Yeah. It's crazy. You know what I mean? Uh, it's not as crazy as Currents to me right now, uh -huh. but I, I, I'm sure it'll grow on me. It's definitely a great album, though, but dude is a genius. You know what I mean? But I listen to just so many different things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I listen to Synthwave. I'm a real retro 80s head, so yeah. it just takes me back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? In a nostalgic way. Do you think rock and roll is dead? No. I think that... It's just uh, I think it's it's uh, I think hip hop is just on top right now because of the culture. I think we got the number one culture, and if you know back then, you know, they had the number one culture mm -hmm. in a sense. You know what I mean? Because hip hop was fairly new. Yeah. We created that in the eighties. You know what I mean? Maybe late seventies, and then you know. We took it to the next level, yeah. you know what I mean? Hip-hop is universal, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, you go anywhere, it's going to be hip-hop there, whether it's in the commercials or whatever. Yeah. Ads, hip-hop is everywhere, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's, and it's, also it's about to be American culture, not just black culture, it's American culture. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's also taking over video games, as we've heard, I'm a boss in yeah. NBA 2K13, right? Y yeah, and Bubbling was on the last year of Madden. Yeah. Yeah, so that was cool. Yeah. So how does that feel that your production is on the soundtrack for the NBA 2K games? Uh, it's it's unreal, man. Because you know I came up, I had the first 2K on Dreamcast. Yeah. You know what I mean, so just growing up playing it, and then having you know your music in these games. Same thing with Madden. I remember playing Madden '97 on PlayStation. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just you know it's surreal, man. It's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I don't know, man. Every day is a surprise, so, yeah. you know. God is good. God is great. Yes. For sure. He is. He is. Now, who are some of the teams that you root for? Because I cover sports on my show. Yeah, I'm a 49ers fan. Niners I'm a Sixers fan. fan. I'm a Sixers fan. I'm a Phillies fan. Uh, fan. I'm a Flyers fan. But uh, I grew up uh, in a Niners household. My mom was a Niners fan. Her brother was a Niners fan. And my, my brothers was Niners fans. Mm -hmm. So, by default, I, I grew up watching them. So, you know. We, you know, we came up short. Oh, this year. Yeah, yeah. this year. Well, we'll be right back. Yeah. We, I, I, I got, uh, I got trust in uh, Shanahan and Jimmy G. Yeah. How do you feel about Jimmy G? He's great, man. I think that. Uh, I don't think it was his fault. I think that the. I think that the play calling could have been a little bit better because I, I know the game before that we beat um Green Bay, and we threw the ball seven times and we ran down their throat. Yeah. Super Bowl, same thing. We they couldn't stop the run, but I don't know why he, they were trying to throw the ball, yeah. I, don't, I don't understand, you know what I mean? But, you know, it is what it is. We'll be back, for sure. Yeah. We'll, at least, we'll at least be back. Um, we're not losing a lot of players. You know, no. man, we got all our key players on defense and offense. We got a young squad. We got my boy Kittle. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, he's... Sanders, yeah. Debo Samuel, so we got Jimmy G. He's growing, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm glad you guys took him from the Patriots because I'm a Jets fan. So if I had to deal with Jimmy G and the Patriots after Tom Brady, <laughs> I know, right? It would have been a wrap. He, and he came right under Tom Brady. Yeah. I think that he was a threat, so they had to get rid of him. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> if I had to deal with that for another 20 years, I don't know what I would do. I know, man. For sure. It's rough, but the Sixers are looking good. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, we're dealing with injury. The back has been bothering them. And... Ben Simmons having a back problem too, lower back problem. It yeah. might be his season might be done, but I know that we just need one score. You know what I mean? Um, 
Tobias Harris got to step it up. Um, Al Horford, he just got to figure out his role. Maybe this will help him do his thing, um, find out where he fit at. But I know we'll go deep in the playoffs, hopefully. Yeah. Um, could we make it out? I don't know. I, I felt like last year was our year to win it. Kawhi got that lucky shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is. And now he's out there for the Clippers now. Yeah. yeah. Kawhi is a, he's a monster, man. Yeah. The humble giant. Think, just think of that, about that one and done for the Raptors. I mean, I, how could you be mad? He, you know, he can't yeah. help contribute to a championship. And, you know. Yeah. That was that. Yeah. The fans can't be mad either because he won a yeah. ring and that was it. I mean, uh, Toronto, you know, that's a big, I mean, winning a ring is a big thing. Yeah. I mean, look at what, uh, you know, this, you know, the Super Bowl for Philly, I mean, for the Eagles did for Philly, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The city is all the way back, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? The social life, Philly is really on the come up, you know what I mean? It's a lot of good restaurants and nightlife, you know yeah. what I mean? Because team, the teams are winning, so, you know, that kind of help us out on the music scene as yeah. well, you yeah. know what I mean? It does. Cause when we, when me and Meek was coming up, the, the teams were trash. So it was like hard to like even like you know do shows in Philly or go to the clubs and stuff like that. Cause it was like really dead. Yeah. But it's just a different type of uh, scene nowadays. You know what I mean? Where people are doing like you know sports bars and lounges and things like that. Yeah. But it's like a it's a popping scene downtown for sure. Mm -hmm. Cause the teams are winning. Yeah, and I, I definitely think that. Philly has turned things around drastically, and I wish Allen Iverson got a ring. Just looking back on his yeah. career, he had such a great career. He's my favorite basketball player ever, mm -hmm. for sure. And uh, I think that, um, I mean, you know, sometimes it don't fly that way, you know what I mean? I, I honestly don't feel like, you know, rings uh, matter solidify yeah. you as a, one of the best, you know what I mean? Because, like, you look at dudes like Carl Malone, and Charles Barkley, John yeah. Stockton, Patrick Ewing, Patrick Ewing, and the list goes on. Whoever, was, I mean, listen, even like dudes like Penny Hardaway had a oh, huge yeah. impact. You know what I mean? He still talked about to this day. He never won a ring. Yeah. And it's dudes like, you know, I'm not even gonna say no names, but it's dudes that got seven rings. Yeah. That you know, that you know, played for championship teams as nobody talks about. You know what I mean? So it's all about the individual play, but I mean, only certain. Players can, you know, get lucky enough to, you know, get that. Because, like, look at my man Melo. I think Me Melo is, the, if not the greatest scorer I've ever seen, you know what I mean? Yeah. One of the greatest scorers, but, you know, he, he just wasn't put in a good situation to yeah. win a ring, you know what I mean? The Knicks, yeah. especially. I'm a Knicks fan, too, so. How many amazing rappers or producers never win a Grammy, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Nas. Yeah, just think about that. Arguably you, the best. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean? Illmatic. Right. So considered to be the greatest uh, hip hop album of all time. Never won a Grammy. Sometimes it don't swing that way. Yeah. Sometimes uh, it might be management uh, in basketball. It's certain things that, you know, yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Nah, I go. Yeah, well, you mentioned, we talked about Allen Iverson. Have you ever heard his raps? Uh, yeah, come yeah, on. Yeah. From, 40 I'm bars. From that area. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? I heard the whole album when he was Jews, yeah. you know what I mean? What'd you think of him as a rapper? I thought he was dope, you know what I mean? I think he had his own style, and I think that he could have really popped off. That was the crazy <laughs> thing, because he had, he had the swag. Rappers wanted to be Allen Iverson, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, you know, the women loved him, and, you know, he was AI. He was that guy. Mm -hmm. He was the biggest thing in the world. Yeah. What do you think was the best rapper athlete? Uh, I got to work with quite a few. Um, Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard. Lou Will. Yeah. I think, I mean, you know, Shaq might be the GOAT because, you know, he got them plaques. Yeah, he does. You know he has mean? a song with Biggie. And then he, their their beef was, was good for hip-hop, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? With the diss tracks, him and Dame. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's a lot of uh, dope uh, uh, rapper, uh, you know, basketball players. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know. I'm rocking with Dame right now. I ain't gonna Dame. lie. Oh yeah, his freestyle. I love Lou Will though. Crazy. I'm on Lou Will last project too. I Man. did a joint with him and Kiss. Lou Will, me and him go way back. Since like 2009, 2010. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he used to play for the Sixers and Bow Wow. Used to, um, I used to work with Bow Wow mm -hmm. when he was over at Young Money and uh, I mean Cash Money. And he used to always like you know have Lou Williams in the studio and stuff like that. We ended up just working. Cause yeah. I respected his his bars. You know what I mean? Yeah.
and we just spoke about the Grammy Awards too. And you won a Grammy. Yeah, last year. Yeah, what was that like? For uh, Anderson Pack, uh, bubbling, and it was it was surreal, man. It was surreal. Mm -hmm. It was surreal. And you know what's crazy? We were late going to the red carpet when I found out we had went and took pictures, and I didn't even go in. I left. Oh I got man. Drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I had um I had my brothers out there and a few of my peoples. Yeah. We celebrated like crazy. Yeah. That was a crazy hangover, man. <laughs> it was. So, tell me, your brother is also a huge producer as well. He's a legend. Oh, yeah. Man. He's a young legend. Huge. Yeah, he did the intro for Meek Mill. Yeah. And you know what was crazy about that? The, um, the Eagles came out to that joint and won the Super Bowl. So, yeah. my mom was like really geek. She was geek about that. You mm. know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, he's doing his thing too. Yeah. He got like, a whole bunch of stuff coming too. I think he's working on Drake new drink. Yeah. Yeah, so. Big things yeah, coming. He's fresh off of the Cardi B album. You know what I mean? Man. But, uh, yeah. He's doing his thing too. <laughs> it's, and, uh, you know, I'm proud of him because I taught him everything I know. So, for him to do the things he do, like, I feel like he's way more, like, gifted than me. Really? Yeah. Think so? Because I, he never had a chance to be whack. So when he came in, he already had the formula. Yeah, he did stay scheming, right? Yeah, he did yeah. stay scheming. He did a lot of records. House Party. Like house Party's crazy. View. Oh, he did Hype on Views. Yeah. yeah he's, he's that boy. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, Jill, is there anything else you want to get out on the airwaves today? Upcoming tracks that we could expect in the near future? Yeah, I'm actually dropping a project soon, you know what yeah. I mean? So I got two projects. I got a drink to come out before my album. It got Davies on there. It got Days oh, Loaf. Yes. It got it Casanova low. on there with my guy. Uh, man, I guess there's a whole bunch of surprises. And then the album with Gratitude is coming soon through Rock Nation slash TIG. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's it, man. Yeah. It's just working. You know what I love to see you do? Something with Griselda. You know what? It's crazy because I just connected with Benny the Butcher. Yeah. Yup, I just connected with him two weeks ago. So, Benny, I'm putting that pack together for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Somebody. Let that man know. Yeah, they got yeah. that real hip hop sound. Yeah, I got too, some gritty stuff, but I also got like some stuff like you know, like some stuff Meek would jump yeah, on. Meek will, yeah, Meek like, Yeah, I like, like that him on that too. Yeah, yeah. I, I like got that. Some bounce for him. Yeah, with some like, like some standing on Ferrari type stuff. Yeah. He get off on that. You know what I mean? Definitely. But I, I don't want, I don't want to cater to his sound. I want to get him out of that box. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want him to jump on a Jalil beat. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to come to his world. I want him to come to my world and do something yeah. epic. You know what I mean? Because it changes yeah. up his artistry. They got a crazy wave right now. Yeah. Man, I respect it. They're going nuts in yeah. Buffalo. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Anything else, Jalil? Nah, man. I'm here, man. Thank you for having me. Oh, no uh, doubt. Would love to come back up soon, so, you know. Yeah, you're always welcome. Anytime you need any, you know, promo, anytime you're dropping a new record, you know, just let me know. And especially if it's clean, I'll get it played on here. He's our music director, so. Oh, man, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> he said he's been rocking since, uh... The old flamer yeah. two days yeah. and stuff like Flamers that. Flamers too, you already know. Yeah. So, you know, uh, definitely going to get the project to you ASAP because I need you to blast that off. Yeah, especially, I mean, the college kids love this stuff. Hey, man, I love it. I love it. Man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, you know, it's crazy. I was telling my fr uh, my people's coming up here um, that uh, I always wanted to come out here because, you know, coming to America, they, they was at a uh, St. John's game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. So I always wanted to come up here and just go to a game. Yeah, and they're coming out with a com coming to America too. It's amazing, man. Yeah. Eddie Murphy is the GOAT. He is. You know what I mean? So, I'm glad he's back. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to jump out there and just get to work. I know um, the expectations is crazy, but sometimes you just want to work and just do what you love to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes you just got to not care and just work, man. Just put music out yeah. or whatever you do. You know yeah. what I mean? How do, and I got to ask this last question here. We have currently three producers here in the station that have been inspired by you. How do you feel to have people all around the world, especially in this station, three people alone that are inspired by you and maybe producing because of you? How do I feel? Yeah. I think it's amazing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, even going on YouTube and seeing like a video that I, uh, me making a beat and it got over a million views and things like that. It's like, wow, people really pay attention to what I do or, or inspire and you never know who you inspire um, by just doing you. You know what I mean? Uh, it's a wonderful feeling, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm going to continue to, uh, you know, create beats and kind of spread that knowledge. Um, Quiet is kept. I might be doing a show uh, through Glasshouse Entertainment. Okay. They got, like, Amish Mafia and a whole bunch of, like, reality shows. 
but it's really um, about like finding the next producer and kind of like giving them the game because outside of that I do real estate as well so okay um just you know creating your brand and outside of that doing things to leverage your brand and you know leverage your brand to do other things and to make money in this business yeah. you know what I mean so you know that's the next thing that's coming up soon so for sure stay tuned yeah that's all that's all you can say yeah definitely yeah so how about you tell them where they can follow you on Instagram and Twitter? Yeah, you can follow me everything. Jalil Beats, J A H L I L B A T B A T S. Holla at your boy. You already know. And thank you for stopping by on the show today. I appreciate okay. it again. How about a round of applause? A round of no. applause for you today. <laughs> <laughs> Big things coming here. A legend in the booth. And thank he's going to be off to do great and better things. Even though, as you can use as inspiration, Kobe, he did it all. Won five rings. Like he's been, Kobe, yeah, and that, that hurt me, man. Oh, uh, yeah. Because, like, you know, with Cole, I don't, you know, with Cole, <coughs> we knew that after his career was over, he was going to do a whole, a slew of, like, big things. Yeah. He was going to be a billionaire. Yeah. He was going to win more awards. He won an Oscar. That, that's he was going to do up. so much to kind of, like, you know, push basketball forward, you yeah. know, further. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even helping out in the WNBA, you know what I mean? His influence and the things that he can bring, yeah. you know, with just his daughter being there, you know what I mean? He would want his daughter to be on the biggest stage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Cole was one of a kind, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's so beautiful um, that, you know, his message is now being spread because definitely, he definitely was an insp inspirational dude. Yeah. And his brand reflected that, and that's what his brand was built off. I don't even know if that was a conscious thing, but, you know. Yeah. He's a legend, man. He is. And his daughter's a legend now, too. Yeah. How crazy is that? Rest in peace to both of them. And yeah. Just as I said, five rings and an Oscar, bigger and better things for you. You already have a Grammy and so much accomplishments, and much more will be coming your way for sure. For sure, for sure. For sure. God we're, willing, man. Yes. You are right here. We're now tuning out on WSJU Radio, Mad Max. You know what it is. When you hear the classic track, you're going to hear it. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Thank you to everyone tuning in. See you next week.